بسم الله السلام عليكم غير توسكي السلام عليكم يا yeah. Good morning, ladies. It's 6.34, so we're actually four minutes late. So we should start, right? Uh, so to the technical issues, can everyone hear me, especially those in the back? Alhamdulillah. Uh, I'm vaccinated, so that's why I'm not using my mask, in case you're all wondering. And plus, when you speak with a mask, it's a little bit tough. Let alone when you talk about menstruation with a mask, you probably will sleep in the next 10 minutes. So I have to make sure I keep you awake. All right? Okay. How many of you have studied this subject before? Okay. I have one hand. Like how many has maybe have an idea about the subject? How many are clueless, never studied this? Mom taught me whatever she taught me, right? Okay. So it's a one third, actually one person who studied, which is not too bad, alhamdulillah. And then we have the rest is 50-50. So you're excited about this? Of course you're going to say yes. What are you going to tell me? But of course, you are, you, if you are not excited, you wouldn't be here. So I'm waiting to see if they will be able. Can you see the slide? Because of the, the lights. Okay. Allah ibarik fiqh. Jazakallah khair. Okay. So what we're going to do. Actually, I love this setup. This is the first time other than the Sohba program where I see people on the floor. This is actually the Sunnah. The teacher is always on the floor. Uh, the students are on the floor. And the teacher usually sits a little bit higher up. So it's really interesting. Jazakumullah khair. Already, everybody is ready. Everyone has their pens. And why this is empty? I'm going to ask the people in the back first. The last people will be asked the one sits in the front. So it's up to you where you want to sit. Ah, very good, sir. All right. Yeah, much better. It's all off, if you don't mind, brother. Can you see it? Yeah, because it's extremely important for you to see the slides. And I am going to... So, okay. So do you see? Okay. Good luck for me how I'm going to see this. So I hope this is what I want from you. If I am saying something, you're not seeing it there. Because I have the same slide, let me know. Are you with me? Yes? The, the people in the front may be tough for you to see the slides. So you go to the second floor. It's okay. Because I, you have to see. Yeah. Right. But that's okay. Yeah, but the, the, I always learned and taught as everything is on time. And it's an Islamic concept, by the way. Start And we are, the Muslims are famous for being not on time, right? Have you had people invite you for a wedding and the wedding is seven o'clock and they tell you don't come at seven, nobody will be there. So let's learn, let's change this. Alhamdulillah, it's, it's so beautiful to see all these women, honestly, Allah is my witness, on a Friday. Um, I mean, you can have been doing anything else with your children, with friends, coming here to learn about the subject who is least to say is very difficult and dry. So we're going to try to make it as, as easy as possible, inshallah. And if you learned one thing from the whole weekend, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Don't get overwhelmed because this topic in general is overwhelming, not to you and me, to the real scholars. And I'm going to share with you some slides. So for those of you who don't know me, how many of you know me? Really? Alhamdulillah. So I'm a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My name is Haifa Yunus. I am an OBGYN by profession. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed me with studying Islamic studies and memorized his book, Walillah alhamdulillah minna. And this is one of the toughest topics, the most common questions I get before Ramadan, before Hajj. Like before Ramadan, I, I would love to have a woman send me a question saying, how do I get closer to Allah in Ramadan? No, the question is, can I fast, can I not fast? I just saw the blood one minute before Maghrib. Is my fasting is okay? You know, the usual. Alhamdulillah, I look at it positively that this is a way that you all or that woman and everybody else wants to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I want you to move. And this is what I'm going to try to share with you this weekend. It's not only 
this topic, but we're going to try to move. I, I was sharing this with some of the beautiful sisters I met for lunch, is how to move from the tra traditional way of learning we women, how we were taught, to moving to the next step as servants of Allah, as a woman who serves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and you need to start feeling this, and inshallah Allah will put for you this. So here you go. Um, this is, I have to put, yeah, this one, the staff at Jannah Institute put this. So uh, there's a Jannah Institute, which is a, an Islamic Institute, Women for Women. And alhamdulillah, we just finished this course, but uh, just before Ramadan was the highest number of students registered in a course I have given, which made me really good. So a woman really wants to learn. So if I can yani, kindly ask you not to share these slides, if there's a question or something, I will be more than happy to do that. And then because there is a, a project behind this class and app, uh, behind these slides, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I ask you all to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it happen, Ya Rabbi Ameen. So let's start, Bismillah. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا إنك سميع مجيب الدعاء اللهم أني أعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع وقلب لا يخشى ونفس لا تشبع ومن دعاء لا يسمع ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي So I want you all to remember this dua and I always say this dua and there is a, a, a beautiful hadith of Rasul and I, I, in every slide where there is a hadith or there is a verse of the Quran you will see the source and learn this as women. Let alone women of knowledge, let alone most of you, I was told, your teachers. So you're not, it's, it doesn't befit you to say, Qala Rasul Alayhi What is the source? Where is it? Let alone the, the verse from the Quran. Difficult in the beginning, but Allah will make it easy. So I put for you all the sources. Okay, and this is a dua of Rasul Alayhi asked Allah for himself. What about you and me? Our Rasul is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from a, a, a knowledge that is not beneficial. What is a knowledge that is not beneficial? For those of you who don't know me, I do not speak alone. You have to talk to me. Otherwise, you all will sleep and start looking at your phones. So what is a beneficial knowledge and not a benef beneficial knowledge? So ilmun la yanfa. He asked Allah to protect him from a knowledge that is not beneficial. What is that? Yes. Can you speak up? I have three issues. Distance, or mask, or fan. So may Allah make it easy for me. And you have no mic. So can you, yeah, say it. I think I heard you, but I just want to make sure everyone. So the knowledge that is, can't hear you. So the knowledge that will not lead you to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh-huh. So you worship Allah properly. Okay. So can be, okay, and this is a good question for everybody. Can, can being a physician or studying medicine is beneficial knowledge? You all said yes. Why? She just said, she gave you the d definition, the total. She told you a, a knowledge that will bring me close to Allah. And I immediately asked you, studying medicine is a beneficial knowledge? You all said yes. Why? How many physicians know Allah? How many physicians doesn't know Allah? So what is the right answer? It's not a yes or no. I'm giving you a clue. Huh? Exactly. Before what you do, but that's very good, is why are you studying it? And what are you doing with it? Even Islamic studies, I, I asked some of the girls when I met this for the lunch, I was like, why do you want to study Islamic studies? So you will be called Sheikha? So the masjid will hire you as a female scholar resident? That's not beneficial, that's for dunya. This will be haba and manthura on day of judgment. Allah will say, you didn't do this for me. You know the, the, the hadith of, the meaning of, where the three people, Allah will ask them on day of judgment? Right? You know, the shaheed, the martyr. And Allah said, you didn't do this for me. The knowledgeable. 
You didn't do this for me. The hafil of the Quran. You didn't do this for me. So people will say you're a hafil. So always renew. Re, uh, number one, visit your niyyah. Write this down in everything you do. Not only in classes. Why do you want to get married? Why do you want to have children? Why do you want to travel? Why do you want to cut your hair? Honestly, why do you want to take a shower? Don't say just because. Everybody does it. I like it. Never say this. There's no niya. There's no reward. Learn to change your daily actions to act of worship. That's how you move from ordinary to being a servant of Allah. Why you are here? To learn. Alhamdulillah, of course. But why do you want to learn? Why do you want to learn? I'm asking anybody can answer me. Why do you want to learn? This topic, not in general. This topic, why? To please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. True, but there is more to it. Specifically this topic. It's going to come in the slides. Yes. I didn't hear well. Please forgive me. Yeah, so, yes, you want to have the right knowledge about this topic. Why? You're absolutely right. Why? Exactly. Exactly. How do I know how to worship Allah? How do I know not to fast in Ramadan in that day or that time? Right? And it's going to come in the slide. So always revisit your niya. If you didn't learn anything in this coming weekend, except what I just said, you've learned a lot. Why do you cook for your family? Well, children are hungry. That's not for Allah. Why did you cook macaroni and cheese? Well, my children loves it. That's not for Allah. Well, my children loves it. But you have to find a niya to please Allah. What are you going to do? You're, you're cooking for your children because they love it. Burger, fries. But how do you change it to please Allah? Huh? Yeah, but how? In this, in this scenario, how? Yes. But fries is not healthy food, but they love it. Ah. I'm glad you're thinking. When you give them fries, are they going to be happy? Mom, I love you, they kiss you. You made a Muslim happy. That's an act of worship. So learn this and keep asking Allah to show you. It's very easy later on. In the beginning, you have to keep reminding yourself. Any job you do, whatever your profession, I was taught this first thing that I was taught. So every time you open a door to see a patient, say, Ya Allah, this is for you. So the patient pleased and she did, thank you, alhamdulillah. If she didn't, alhamdulillah, because he did it for Allah. So you're here today to learn, number one, I can give you 10, 20 niyas for why you're here. But number one, we will say, seeking knowledge. And that's something pleasing Allah. Number two, to worship Allah properly. How do I know? Learn to. Number three, ya'muru masajid Allah, you're in the masjid. Look at this beautiful number. And Allah said, this is sort of tawbah. Who are the best? Those who flourish the masajid of Allah. Number four, I can teach my daughter. So my daughter can worship Allah in the right way. Five, I meet these beautiful people. And the best company you are in is the company of the righteous people. Six, when you sit and learn about Allah, what do you get? Who, who comes around you? Angels, you all know that. Remind yourself, literally remind yourself in every step. When I put my foot in the plane, this is, by the way, my first trip since the COVID. I've, I am, before the COVID, I used to live in the planes. Like I used to joke with my family, I was like, I live in the sky more than I live on, the, on earth. But I didn't, this is my first one. And then when I put my foot in the plane, leaving St. Louis, I said, Ya Allah, this is for you. You taught me this. I want all your servants to learn this so they worship you correctly. Done. If I died in the plane, Allah knows why I'm here. So learn this extremely important. Teachers, mothers, whatever profession you have, whatever decision you're taking in your life, first question has to be, 
why and never answer I like it that's your nafs it has to be something to please Allah and if there is no reason to please Allah don't do it let alone if it doesn't please Allah Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen now how do I learn how do I learn this is anybody half of here from the Quran any half of in this room I love to tease the half of but that's okay I gave you the clue anyway it's in there this is the last page of Surah Yusuf after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala covered all the story of Sayyidina Yusuf, the last page is Allah talking to Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam, and that's the statement. قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي Say, is, is it moving? Remember I told you, is it moving? Next slide. Who, would, who do I give to? Ah, assalamu alaikum. I didn't see you now. So next slide, please. Already, please remind me. If I say something, you don't see it. Say, Sister Haifa, next slide. Tayyip? Yes? Okay. This is a challenge, but Allah will remind us for all these difficulties. So, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي Say, this is my path. This is a Rasul alayhi قُلْ in the Quran, when you read قُلْ say, meaning Allah telling the Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam, to say, this is my path. أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ I call to Allah. How? عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ knowledge and I'm saying this specifically to women don't you give a fatwa don't you say something you don't know this is serious is way more serious than you give uh, a recipe of uh, something that is not correct I had someone on Friday actually last Tuesday texted me and I couldn't believe the question let alone the fatwa she said sister Haifa I found out I've been doing this all my life wrong. I was like, subhanAllah, what were you doing? She said, Sister Haifa, a woman just told me before I go to Jumu'ah, listen to this. Before I go to Jumu'ah, I have to pray four fardah at home. I have to pray four ruka'at of Dhuhr before I go for Jumu'ah. And I was wrong all my life because I never prayed Dhuhr in my life. Which one is right? Uh oh which one is right don't be scared say I don't know which one is right you have to pray for before Juma ah? you have to pray just Juma ah? so why didn't you answer me don't be scared this is absolutely I was like who told you this she said the sister of knowledge I was like subhanallah Absolutely, Jumu'ah Salah replace Dhuhr if you pray it in the masjid with the Imam. So, ala basira, ala basira, don't answer WhatsApp group, now these days Telegram groups, don't answer. Say, la a'lam. Imam Malik used to say the following, man qala la a'lam faqad afta. The person who say, I don't know, gave the right answer. Unless you really know it. I mean, like, what is the last surah in the Quran? Of course, you're going to answer. I hope you know. Inshallah. Next, please. Five. Here you go. Why you are learning. Right? It is of the most important obligation. Look at the words. This is fiqh. Any lawyer in this room? No lawyer? Nobody studying law? Five. Fiqh. When you study fiqh, you're studying like law. Every word counts. So when I say obligation, I mean something. When I say haram, it means something. When I say it's okay, I mean something. It's not like we speak. Every word has consequences. So it's of the most important obligation. Look at this. To know the rulings of the Lord of the worlds so you can worship him correctly. That's how it is. So imagine if you come to this masjid to pray Jumu'ah and you don't have wudu. Is your salah valid? Why not? Why not? Answer me. So one person loud. I can't hear you. Yeah, you don't have wudu and you said, Khalas, Allahu Akbar. Why not? You prayed. You did the same movement. Huh? You didn't answer correctly, but have correctly. She said to be clean is a prerequisite. The prerequisite is correct, the clean is not correct. 
not proper. So what is the proper word? Huh? At-tahara is not a proper word. It's part of it. Yes. Don't assume. Wudu is a prerequisition for the validity of salah. So a non-Muslim comes in, alhamdulillah, and she's praying with you. Is her salah valid? Why not? She did wudu. She is not a Muslim, and 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 so she's not a Muslim. True. And do you see what I'm teasing you? No. 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 What's one of the prerequisition? A Muslim baligun aqil. You studied fiqh, right? I was told. What's wrong? What happened to it? Traveled, went back home. So yes, yeah, so prerequisition. So this is what it is. Obligations to know so you know how to worship Allah properly. Properly, ladies, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-jahl, ignorance, is not an excuse. When I and you or stand in front of Allah, are we going to have a private meeting with Allah? Is any, any of us will have a private meeting with Allah on Day of Judgment? Each one of us, individually. Each one will come alone, meeting Allah. He's going to ask me, why didn't you know, Ya Haifa? What do I say? There was no internet? I didn't know English? The Quran was not translated. What is my excuse? Did you get my point? So obligation to learn so you can worship Allah properly. Next one, please. Now why to study the ruling of menstruation? That's your niya. That's what explain it, right? And by the way, it's called menstruation and postnatal bleeding, we call it. So after, you, after delivery. Menstruation, this is an Imam Darumi. And he says, menstruation is a lost branch of knowledge. No book was authored to deal with it sufficiently. It's so true. There is no English book. Talk about this in detail. The, everything I'm sharing with you is translated. I translated it because there is nothing in English. There's just a small one. There's three books, very small. One is in the Hanafi book and the other two, very small, very, very basic. There isn't. And now I'm going to tell you why. So basically, is a lost branch. Imam Ahmed said the following. He said, not me. I stayed nine years learning the knowledge of menstruation. Imam Ahmed, nine years. Why? I'll come to you. Don't, don't be too sad. Don't be shocked. Alhamdulillah. Next one, please. May Allah reward you. The branch of knowledge, this is Imam uh, Ibn Najim. How many of you here are Hanafi? Oh, not that many. What is the rest? Shafi'i, show me. MashaAllah, and Maliki. MashaAllah, no Hanbali here? Tabarakallah. This is the first group. Usually I get 99.9 Hanafi. Alhamdulillah. So this is why I cover. I usually cover the four school of thoughts. So anyway, Imam uh, Ibn Nujaym is a famous Hanafi scholar. He said the branch of knowledge becomes so important when it is harmful not to know. Did you get the point? So when I don't know, let's say I don't know zakah ruling, but I don't work. I don't have money. It's not a big deal. But if I have money, and I don't know anything about zakah, I'm in big trouble. So learning about zakah becomes important, right? Now, in case you will say, and this may come to your mind, some of you, I was like, I'm menopause. Why do I need to learn about this? I had friends who came to me, I was like, I'm menopause, Sister Eva. Why do I want to learn this? What do you think my answer was? I'm sorry, one person. Yes. Can't hear you. I love to hear you. Okay, so she said somebody around may need. No, I answered even more. So if you see bleeding today, what are you going to do? Are you going to pray or not pray? She looked at me and says, I said, then you need to study it. And by the way, you all answered wrong. 
Yeah, don't you ever answer right away. You, I'll show you how at the end you will think zillion times before you give a yes answer or a right answer. There's always a depend. And you need more information. So be careful. So here you go. Imam Ibn Nujayim says, it's so important to learn this. It's not boring. It's difficult. Yes, boring could be. But I need to learn this because that's my worship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here you go. Ibn Qudama, he's a Hanbali, says the rules that depend on menstruation. There are rules. There are rules depend on menstruation? There are rules. Yes or no? Don't look at the slide. It's not in the slide. That's tomorrow you will learn. Is there rules related to menstruation? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. If you said yes, you're right. Tell me. Hajj and Umrah. The sister thought about the thing that we're not going to do this year. Ya Rabbi Ameen. Maybe Allah will invite us. Right? Only 60,000 people are allowed this year for Hajj. Who are these from all over the world? Who are these? Subhanallah. So why do I have to learn? Why it is there is rules? What is the number one ruling? Number one ruling daily. Salah. My salah. Right? So there is rules depend on it. Now because of the, and it's in there, because of the numerous Sharia rulings related to menstruation, learning rulings related to menstruation, it's actually, by the way, it's a fardu'ayn. You know what's fardu'ayn? Did they teach you fardu'ayn, fard kifaya? Collective uh, duty and individual duty? Menstruation knowledge is collective or it is individual? It's individual. You have to know it because it's related to you. And not every community has, and you don't have an access in every community or every day and every minute to somebody who gives you the ruling. Next one, please. Okay, so here we go again. Obligation, fardu'ayn. Please learn it. And your children, and your daughter will ask you, especially if you are somebody, let's say, you're a student, mashallah, in the seminary, your relatives may think you are, you know, and they will come to ask you. If you need to answer, you need to know the right answer. So it is fardu'ayn. Next one, please. Tay. Why it is so difficult? And why Imam Ahmed stayed nine years, and Imam Ibn Nujayim tells you, and Imam Darami told you it's a lost branch, because there isn't a verse in the Quran except the one you see it on your screen. That is it. Nothing in the Quran. How many verses in the Quran? I can't hear. 6,000. I, I heard the 6,000, I heard the 3,000, and then you are very close. Exactly. So more than 6,000 verses in the Quran talks about everything. There is only one at all, only one categorically. There is no mention of it later on in a different way, in a different word. That is it. وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْمَحِيرِ قُلْ هُوَ أَذَنْ فَاعْتَزِلُ النِّسَاءَ فِي الْمَحِيرِ ولا تقربوهن حتى يطهرن فإذا تطهرن فأتوهن من حيث أمركم الله إن الله يحب التوابين ويحب المتطهرين You have it, it's Surah Al-Baqarah 222 You should never forget this, it's very unique number It's the Surah chapter is 2 and the verse is 222 Right? That's it, there's nothing else What? Let's see, I want your brain with me Look at the verse what other thing that catch your eyes in the verse related to women? Yes. I, I can't hear you. In the verse, in the verse. I, I can't hear you. Exactly. This is what I tell all my patients when they have pain before the period. Right? Dysmenorrhea, we call it. Sometimes it's really bad. I mean, especially young girls, they suffer. And I said, SubhanAllah, Allah said it. And you know what's ada? It's not pain only. Ada, it's harm. So it's pain, it's discomfort, and the discomfort can be emotional, it can be physical, true or false. We all know this. You all have wanted through it. 
maybe every month, maybe once in your lifetime. Ada. And what did Allah say? Stay away. This is related to, we'll come to it later on. So once you think of menstruation, right? It is something that is not very pleasure. It's not fun. Of course, shaitan is going to come and ask you, make you ask this question. So why do I have to have it? If it's pain. Why did Allah give this to me? May Allah forgive us. But these days we question everything. Why? Have, have you had somebody ask you this question? Lucky you. Why? Everybody asks these days why. Why? I, why does Allah give me menstruation? And he said it's pain and it's harm. I can't hear you. La, 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 don't you say it's a ptila. She said it's a test. Don't say that. People will really, you have to be very careful when you come to the woman. What is the answer, the beautiful answer? I can't hear you. Allah is Hakim, always there's a wisdom. What is the wisdom? I can't hear you. More. Can't hear you with the mask. Brings you closer to Allah. Talk, tell this to a 15-year-old who has uh, really pain throwing up and she's in the emergency room. You're getting close to it. What honor menstruation bring? I gave you a clue. How you will become a mother if you don't have menstruation? You will not be able to get pregnant unless you have menstruation. That's the hikmah. That's the hikmah. Remember this. Always look. You, you, you all answered very well. Alhamdulillah. But there is always a hikmah. And I ask Allah, did, what Allah said in Surah Al-Baqarah? يؤتي الحكمة من يشاء ومن يؤتي الحكمة فقد أوتي خيرا كثيرا Allah gives wisdom to whom he wills. And those who are given wisdom have been given a lot of khair. So ask Allah, because these norms, this is what my goal in this class is not only to teach you theory, reality. People will ask you these questions. Young girls these days, everything they question. From the presence of Allah to everything else, to why I am praying in the back. Why cannot I be in the front and I be in the place of Sheikh Yasin? Have you heard that already? Exactly. You need to get ready. And don't get offended, don't get upset. But this is how you look at it. Do you want to be a mother? And what did the Rasul said about the mother? Ummak thumma ummak thumma ummak. Your mother, your mother, your mother, then your father. How you become a mother? No menstruation, no childbirth. Period. No pain, no gain. That applies on this one. I always tell this to patients when they are having a baby. It's painful. Alhamdulillah, there's epidural these days. But I would say, you know what? The most beautiful pain you will ever have. Once you see that baby, everything is gone. And you will get, come back again next year, and I will deliver you. So, Ada, and I'm going to try to bring you to everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make me remember. So, here you go. That's the only verse in the Quran. Next one. This is a beautiful hadith. Oh, yes. A beautiful hadith. Of course, Sayyidah Aisha. So, this is the scenario of this hadith by the time you read it. She was with the Rasul How many times the Rasul performed Hajj? One, only, once. And who he took with him from his wives? Only? You're cheating because you look, because you're reading the Hadith. Did he take other wives or only I say Aisha? Man qala la alam faqad afta. Who says, I don't know, gave the right answer. So anybody knows. Did he take only Sayyidah Aisha? He took more? All of them? None? Huh? Yes. All of them. So I think you're right. Why? Because there's a ruling. You all have done it. How many of you have been to Umrah or Hajj? Alhamdulillah. How many of you have done more than one Umrah at the same time? You went to Masjid Aisha. Why? I have no idea. Everybody tells me go to Masjid Aisha and come back. Why? 
because of this and because he took his other wives with him so let's go to this first so here you go they were all left they came to a place called Saraf Saraf is like a few miles from Mecca so imagine this you're so excited you paid ten thousand dollars to Dar Salaam and you are gonna go to Mecca left Medina and boom you had your period and I have seen this scenario I cannot tell you the reactions of the woman my immediate answer is mashallah you're like Sayyid Aisha she looks at me and said wallahi you're like Sayyid Aisha that's exactly what happened to her they came to Saraf a few miles from Mecca and she starts crying and the Rasulullah look at alayhi salatu wasalam he entered to, her, to the room and he found her crying immediately he said anafasti you have your period and she said yes what did he say that's the other question the answer this is something Allah decreed on the woman of the, the, the daughters of Adam I have no control over it and if you don't get your cycle by 16 or 17 everybody will get worried right whether the girl or the mother so this is something so he said to her this is something Allah decreed on the daughters of Adam do like what like everyone else does except don't do tawaf we'll come to this later inshallah I think tomorrow bi'idhnillah okay I want you to memorize this slide like you know your name because this is going to solve the issue of spotting I spot before the cycle is it my part is it I see blood after the cycle is it do I pray do I fast do I go for hajj do I go for tawaf so what is the word hayyud mean everything in this deen and I'm sure you have taught you've been taught this inshallah you learned it everything in this deen has a name and the name is related to what is this subject for example what is salah mean don't tell me the five salah Allahu Akbar I know the answer what is salah mean what is the origin of the word connection Sila. connection that's the word meaning salah sida connect so the essence of salah is connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what does the word siyam mean what does siyam mean the word sawm means what I'm sorry you define the sawm I talked I'm asking linguistically not Islamically linguistically what does siyam mean I'm sorry you're close mashallah you're very close you always give close answers very close huh Nam, I can't hear you can't we have a mic that we give it to people no yeah yeah because you are suffering and I'm suffering so what does sound mean huh remove it Habib, so I can hear no you it's you yes Naam al imtina to withhold to withhold that's what uh, Sayyidah Maryam uh, in Surah Maryam when she brought Sayyidina Isa قولي إني نذرت للرحمن صوما فلن أكلم اليوم إنسية tell them I made an oath with Allah صوما well she's not eating and drinking nothing to do with that I am not going to be talking withheld so صوم is to withhold Hajj don't tell me I go to Mecca and do all this no linguistically what does the word Hajj mean huh that's translation the word mean in Arabic means what Hajj al bayt meaning what no be close but you, you missed the most important Al Qasd Al Hajj Al Qasd your direction your intention what do you want to do so you say, I say for example I just to bait Alayna Noor I didn't go to Mecca I intend to go and visit her house Al Hajj Al Qasd so learn the meaning of the word why I'm saying this because that will tell you what is Hayyad mean the word is in the Quran what does the word mean 
literally means to flow. You have tear, as sailan, to flow. So here you go. I always say this one woman asked me, I don't know if what I'm seeing bleeding is hayd or not. I was like, okay. Alhamdulillah, we are all women and this is not recorded. When you go to the bathroom, this is how I, I start. When you go to the bathroom, and please forgive me, you urinate. Does it come? She said, yes. I said, that's it. It's your sa sala came in. Flow. So number one is flow. And it's come from Wadi when the valley fill with water. That's hayd. So Islamically, I combined for you, there's so many terminology, and I will show it to you, many definitions in the four school of thoughts. I found this to be the most uh, comprehensive. It's from a contemporary scholar. Anybody from Syria here? Nobody, okay. Sheikh Wahb al-Zuhayli is a very well-known, he passed away a few years ago, very well-known contemporary scholar. May Allah give him Jannah for those. His books are amazing. In fiqh, in, in tafsir, in Quran, amazing. So he combined everyone, and this, this actually even combined with medicine. So menstruation, the bleeding, this has to be blood. And I will probably change this later on to translation to become the colored discharge. Because when you think of blood, you think of red. And the menstruation color, not necessarily red. So let's keep it this way. That flow. And the ones I put in red is what I want you to pay attention. Normally. So you're not sick, you're not ill, you have not delivered the baby, it's normal and regular, regular timing from the furthest side of the womb or the uterus. So bleeding from the vulva is not menstruation, bleeding from the vagina is not menstruation, bleeding from the cervix is not menstruation, it has to come from the inside. Not because of birth or illness. So childbirth, you deliver a baby, the bleeding is not menstruation, it's postnatal. I'm sick, the woman is sick, taking medications, now she's bleeding, that's not menstruation. Clear? You can stop me at any time, and we will try to give you always questions and answers. Clear? Don't ask me anything about something I'm going to come later. Only what I just covered. I have 140 slides for you, so there's a lot of information. Yes, what's your name, my sister? Ayah, you're Egyptian. Because you say ayah, it's ayah, mashallah, verse from the Quran. Or miracle. Yes. I know. Al Iman al Masriya, we call Yes. Oh, it's going to come. That I told you. Don't ask. How do you all know? Of course. The million dollar question. There's three million or four million dollar questions in this topic. How do I know it started? How do I know it ended? How do I know this bleeding I'm seeing is menstruation or something else? That's the most important one. So we'll come to it. Bismillah. So this is the summary of it. Flow of blood, healthy woman from the uterus, not because she delivered the baby, not because she's sick, in an appointed time. Time is the most important. Time is very important. And we're going to come to this in detail. Okay? Bismillah. For school of thoughts, that's the definition of them. I don't think you need to worry about this slide, but since most of you, I think all of you, are students of knowledge, if you come out from this weekend appreciating that there is different opinion and respecting the different opinion, you learned a lot. Khalas, who, are, who am I to judge who's right? This is, there's four opinion, they all have uh, are a lot of reasons why they use this and not this. So if you look at the definition, the most accurate from the, inf I'll come to you in a second, from the information we know now, does she have the four school of thought? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Can we go back, please? May Allah reward you, Habibati. I can't see. Is it the, I can't see. Yes. Is that the one? Yeah. So if you, Look at the four school of thoughts in everything. In salah, the hand is up, the hand is here, the hand is down. There is, they have reasons. And the reasons are so valid. But then some reasons were not there. The later they found the reasons or they found the evidence. So just learn to respect. That's what I want you all. Learn to respect the others. So alhamdulillah, here you have the, almost the four school of thoughts. So she does it this way. That's right. 
as long as what she does is not without knowledge. So here you go, the four school of thoughts. The Imam Al-Ahmad, Imam Ahmad is the, probably the most accurate in this one because he is saying natural, regular, bleeding, shed by the womb of a woman when she reached the age of puberty. It's, it's probably the most accurate, the most accurate one. So in general, it's a normal phenomena. Blood come from the uterus in a certain age, a certain time and not delivery, and not sickness. Clear? Yes? Alhamdulillah. Next one, please. Aha. Uh -huh. What is the minimum age? Yalla ya fuqaha, bismillah. What is the minimum age? I, I want to hear it. Nine. How do you know that? It's true. Don't, you, it's, you're right. But how do you know that? MashaAllah. I'm sorry? MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Already. It's a weak opinion, but you're right. Okay. So it is nine. However, that's not clear cut. Now, that's what you will remember and you will learn in menstruation. There's nothing is written in stones because there is no proofs. There's no, there's no hadith of Rasulullah about the age. When does it start? But most cases, is nine years of age. Guess what medicines say? So you bring your daughter to me in the office and you say, Sister Haifa, she's bleeding. And I say, how old is she? And you say, she's seven. Or you say, she's 10. So because she's seven, it's not menstruation? Or because she's 10, it's menstruation? Did you get my point? Average is nine. So if you look in medicine books, they say the average age is nine. But can it be earlier? The answer is yes. Can it be later? The answer is yes. Have I seen younger girls? Yes. But if she is six or seven, before you say this is menstruation, you need to make sure there's nothing else going on. So if you bring your daughter to me and she's seven, she's bleeding, the first thing I'm going to do, I was like, I need to get an ultrasound. Let's make sure her ovaries are okay. Because there is some condition in the ovaries, produce hormones, she's bleeding, but she's not menstruating yet. That's abnormal. So the average age is nine. However, and I put all the opinion for you, Abdullah ibn Abbas, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas, and Ibn Taymiyyah, he said there is no age. Once the blood that comes in is fit the criteria, that's menstruation. So you bring your seven-year-old to me, and I look at her, and I will examine her, and I see, alhamdulillah, we are all women, I see that she has the breast is formed, right? There is hair. I do send an ultrasound. The ovary is normal. I do some blood work. Everything is normal. I look at you and say, this is her cycle. She's young. Yes, she is. But it is her cycle. Why do I need to know this? Now, the most important question. Why do I need to tell a seven-year-old you had this bleeding is menstruation? Al-Bulugh, mashallah, because she's now become a balugh, meaning Islamically adult. And I'm sorry? So now certain things becomes obligation. SubhanAllah, yani may Allah make it easy for a seven-year-old. Really, and you have to be gentle if that's the case. Even nine, but it's but this is the average age now we are seeing. You go to school, if you have children, if you have girls, you go to the uh, uh, primary school, like sixth grade, half of them has their cycle already. So, subhanAllah, but that's how it is. So, now medicine and Islamic knowledge are agreeing, absolutely. Okay. And that's the other opinions. Now, I'm, I'm sharing with you other. No age before nine that it is possible to, for example, Hanafi school at the age of six. Some Hanafis accept menstruation at the age of seven. The average is nine. Don't, go on, don't worry about a lot of the details, but I'm sharing it with you because you're a student of knowledge. So average is nine. If your daughter is eight and a half, probably it is her cycle. But if she's seven, call your OBGYN. Let her check her. Okay? When does it stop? 
بسم الله منفوس وين I can't hear you حبيبتي I can't hear so menopause menopause when does it stop completely it depends now you're learning right not exactly the right answer this time in all other slides it depends on not this one huh now you're giving me physiology when the ovary stops i need age you're right but what is the age ya allah 45 women will hate you <laughs> what is the age what is medicine says and what islam says and it's very close subhanallah very close what is the average age huh five zero yes why you're scared right that's what islam says five zero most commonly again there's no proof there's no ayah there's no how did they know this you will be so shocked they like Imam Shafi'i they say he did what they call this he went to his town and asked the woman and he got the average Ya Allah look at us and now we just whatever we read on the internet and we are done so the average age here you go different opinion average age the Hanbali says 50 see it here the last one next slide please Habibati you see Hanbali Shafi'i Maliki? Yes. So Hanafi, they say 55. Maliki says 70. Yes. Shafi'i, no limit. Hanbali say 50. Why did I say Hanbali is the closest, right? Because that's what medicine say. Medicine's the average age of menopause is 51 in the United States. Of course, it differ between uh, countries. The, if the country is hot weather, they stop earlier or later? Later, exactly. Like if you go to the Arab world, the average is 55. Because the weather, heat, heat. I always tell women, like in Ramadan, this is another very common, I see, I missed my cycle. I traveled back home and came back and I didn't get my cycle for two months. She's not pregnant. I said, did you, where did you travel? And that's like traveling affected. Fasting affected, stress affected, temperature affected, because it's all how the body react. So if you look at these, Hanafi 55, 70 Maliki, Shafi'i different, Hanbali is 50. What I like, before I go to this, what I like is actually what I tell my patients and the woman who asks me, if you are still seeing the bleeding, the regular, like if you come to me and you say, I'm 54 and I'm still bleeding, Dr. Haifa, and I say, okay, tell me more. So I normally take, literally, I take from her menstrual calendar. When was, and so when was it last year? Uh, last month. When was the month before? When was the month before? And then we look at three months and I say, you're still menstruating. That's normal. So it's not like a cut or written in a stone, but the average. However, have I seen, what is the youngest age of menopause I have seen? So sad. 20. Yeah. 20. Really. I couldn't, I, Allah knows how I, how I delivered the message to her. Because that means no children. Now I told you why it is a ni'mah. Because I had to tell this 20-year-old, newly married, that she will never have children. And a husband. So when you look at menstruation and you complain, talk to this girl. So the youngest I have seen 20, I have seen 27, I've seen 33, 35, 37, 40s, you name it. And I have seen up to 60 and she's still menstruating. So we applied that rule. Still regular, same. And I was like, you're fertile, mashallah, tabarakallah. I delivered the patient yesterday, just before I came to you guys. Wednesday, actually, 47. First baby, natural. Subhanallah, got married at the age 45. First time, Muslim, mashallah, tabarakallah. Then got pregnant, then miscarried last January. You can imagine the drama. And then Allah gave her a baby, Nasr. We just delivered her Wednesday. So, alhamdulillah.
So why I'm sharing these stories with you? Menstruation is a ni'mah. Don't complain about it. Ni'mah. Can't be a mother without it. So this girl actually, the 20-year-old, had a long session with her and her husband. And I'm a kafir liyateen kahateen. I'm starting them go and adopt children. You and the one who adopt and take care of children is like with the Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam like this. So it's a ni'mah. It's a huge ni'mah. Average age, different age, can be as young as 20, can be as old as... I have not seen above 60. Normal. I have not. But that doesn't mean it is not, but very unlikely. Like as you said, Imam Malik regard up to 70. Tayyip, question about this? Yes. Now, how do you know she's menopause? You do a blood test. Because, just for you to know, it's, it's a good information. So, it's amazing the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's being a physician makes you even look and get connected to Allah even more. The miracle of a human being that we don't even look at. So, you, the, the ovary, the uterus, look at it this way. This is the uterus, this is the ovary, and then the brain. This is just the container. And this is the responder. The, all the control is from here. So when we, I want to see if you are menopause or not, I don't look at the uterus, it means nothing. I don't look at the ovaries, I look at the brain, is the brain functioning? So I do one blood test, it's called FSH. If it is above 25, this woman is menopause. This woman came in 103. We did it three times. 103, absolute menopause. It's called premature menopause, even in medicine. So it happens, but that's not the norm. Yani in all my career, I've seen 120, 127, 233, and then 35 and above, I've seen more. Especially people who goes under a lot of stress. I've seen a lot of Bosnian women after the war. And they go through menopause from what they have went to through. Okay, yes. Can she be menopause and come back? Yes, it's possible. It's definitely possible, not common, but I have seen it. To be menopause, you have to have a one year of no cycle. That's the definition of it in medicine. One year, no cycle, to be a menopause. But for this, like when, we, when they come young, in their 20s, and no cycle for two and three months, you have to do a blood test. One of them is this. If this comes high, that's it. But in general, the woman is not menopausal, it's a one year. Like, if she bleeds after, we have to look at it as abnormal, and if nothing is there, then I say, yep, you got your cycle again. I have seen, I have seen it many times. Okay, let's go. Next one. Yes, the possible colors of, yes. This one also memorize with your heart, not only your brain. These are the colors. Four that scholars agree on. The most common color is not red. It is black, darker. Think of it this way, because that really will help you, inshallah, not you. But if you go through a case of abnormal bleeding, and then I was like, I don't know, and I, my first question, can you, can you tell me the difference between the colors or the smell? Is it darker? Is it more thick? So think of it this way. If you are cooking, which we all do, and you cut yourself with a knife, how many have done that? Who didn't, right? What color of the blood comes in here? Red, bright red, and flow. That's bleeding. That's not menstruation, it's not this color, is it? No, I love that. Is it the same flow? No, it's thicker, right? Uh -huh. So number one, the color is most commonly black, red. Why did I put these colors, yellow, or turbid? We're gonna add more. Because at the end of the menstrual cycle, the bleeding color changes, right? You have a, first you have this gush of red and black and then it becomes brown and it may be a little bit of more colored. All this is menstruation. All these color, colors, part of menstruation. So I put for you here, yellowish and turbid discharges after menstruation are counted. If it is after you finish, it is not. We'll come to it later. So here we go. I added the Hanafi and the Shafi'i. They added more colors. So you have greenish, turbid, dusty, right? Red, black, yellow, turbid, and green. 
I've never seen a green, but I don't know why they put the green. Honestly, I have not, because usually green is infection. But I, I'm not going to comment because who I am to comment on Imam Shafi'i. Yes. Aya rush to things. What do we do to her? <laughs> Okay, be patient, and Allah will make you patient. We'll come to this, because that's a very good question. Yeah, exactly. Already. How about this one? Where's our pregnant lady? She left, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give her full, healthy baby and easy delivery. Ya Rabbi, ameen. So, so what do you do if you're pregnant and you're bleeding? How many of you, how many of you have been pregnant? Alhamdulillah. Have you bled during pregnancy? Yes? Anybody? Right. What did you do? Prayed or didn't pray? Not delivery. I'm talking about pregnancy. I thought. She's in big trouble. So what did you do? Pray. Why? Just a second. I'm coming to you. Why you prayed? MashaAllah, I prayed. Okay? Huh? Mom told me. No, really. Huh? You prayed. Why? Why is not a period? Just a second, one by one. Do you see how I'm questioning you? I'm putting you on your tiptoes. Right? Alhamdulillah. Why? You're right. You're right. But why? So you're right, because that's the most correct opinion. But why? Yes, sister. That's not correct. No, not necessarily. It can be, but most of the bleeding in pregnancy is actually from the uterus. But what is the difference? Now, this is you have to be a physician, but in general. So let's go to the next slide, please. OK, different opinion. You never go wrong if you say different opinion. Tayyip? The essential ruling states that the pregnant woman does not menstruate. Islamically, medically goes with it. That's the beauty of it. Why? That's why I was asking you why. Okay. I'm, not, I'm trying not to be very technical because I don't want to bother you with the, with the medicine. But in general, look at my hand. The uterus is exactly like the fruit, the pear fruit. You all have a, you know, you cut the pear, and there's this line in the middle, and then we normally remove it because we can't eat it. That line is the lining of the uterus, exactly, subhanAllah, same, Allah, jazakillah, and how they will see the slides? Huh? I don't know, I'll leave it to you. I love seeing you better, but I want, I'm worried about you seeing the slide. So anyway, the line in the, and here is the lining of the uterus. The lining of the uterus is what we women shed during menstruation. Meaning, if you take, this is technical, but it's very helpful. If you take the blood of menstruation, and you take her blood from the cut, and you put them under the microscope, they are not the same. Not the same at all. The one, the menstruation, has blood and has other tissues, the lining. The blood has blood on it. The pregnant woman does not have this line because she's pregnant. She bleeds from the placenta, and the placenta is blood. SubhanAllah, how did they know that? It's amazing. When I was doing this, I was like, Ya Allah. However, can some women, they are pregnant, still menstruate? The answer is yes, early. How many of you, you didn't know you're pregnant? I see this a lot, right? Yes. You didn't know you're pregnant. And, and you come and you find out you're three months pregnant. And you look at me and says, Dr. Yunus, but I, was, I had my cycle last, week, last month. And I was like, I've seen it. So both opinion is correct. This is what I love about this. Yani literally, after I prepared for this, I have more, way more respect to the scholars. How did they know that? They were men. No microscope. I don't know how much women knew that time. But look at, they, they really put their heart in it. So in general, the answer is no. So immediately you say, it is not my cycle. Unless you're in the beginning, you may have to. 
So it's very rare, as I put it. Next one, what time we have to stop? Do you need to take a break? Really? No break? Very interesting, Ya Rabbi, Dak alhamd. Alhamdulillah, can I take a break? Just a drink? Okay. Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbi, Alameen. Let's go. Bismillah. Next one. This is very technical. I'm going to skip it if you allow me because this is the argument why some says it is she can masturbate and some says she cannot masturbate. I'll pass it if you allow me because it is very um, technical. So this will, next slide. Next one, please. No, you missed it. Go back. Go back, please. Yes. Is it Hanafi and Hanbali on one side? Maliki and Shafi'i? Okay, so here you go. That's a different opinion. We try to make it as easy as possible because when you have it in charts, it will be easier for you. So possible to menstruate. So if you say, yes, I had it, you're right. Here you go. Imam Malik, Shafi'i, and Ibn Taymiyyah. He said, yes, she can. And now, nope, Hanafi and Imam Ahmed or Hanbali school, no, because of this uh, evidence. Medicine says both are possible. Most commonly she does not. So if you are seven or eight months pregnant, I wouldn't say impossible. Nothing is impossible. Very unlikely you are menstruating because it's a complete different mechanism where you are bleeding from. Clear? What time is your maghrib? 8 to 20? Okay. So the pregnant woman, we, we, next slide three, we agreed on that. The pregnant woman does not menstruate. Okay. okay. Two things we need to cover before Maghrib. Minimum days of bleeding. How much? So three days I heard. So I hear, I think 24 hours. One day? Five days? Minimum. Minimum. Don't be, don't confuse that question. Minimum. Three days. Type. Any other? Huh? Somebody said it. Not the, not the, the average, the minimum. One day. Anybody else? Type. Those who said three days, based on what? You're right, so don't get scared. You're right. Who, which school of thought? Yes. I am very surprised you are the only community who doesn't know the Hanafi school. God, everybody else knows. Three and ten rule. Yes. So the three days is Imam Abu Hanifa. Right. The one day answer is incorrect. Not because it's incorrect. Because the way you said it is incorrect. It has to be said in a fiqhi way. You said it's almost correct. It has to be yawmun wa layla, they say. Day and night has to be yawmun wa layla. I'll give you examples so it's like why she's going into these details. So let's go into this. Three days and nights, Abu Hanifa. A day and night, 24 hours. Imam Shafi'i and Al-Hambali, no lower limits. And Imam Malik, Ibn Taymiyyah, and Al-Zuhri. What does that mean? Practically, let's go to life. So this is your daughter. Let's not give your daughter. Um, okay. To give this scenario very common you're a woman who uh, got pregnant delivered breastfeed got pregnant delivered breastfeed for six years which is very common sometimes eight years literally you don't remember anything right and then you start bleeding and the blood is flow or smell or look everything right so you saw the, the bleeding assume more time at 12 noon you saw bleeding what are you gonna do do you get my, why I'm saying this? What are you going to do? Pray or don't pray? Yes or no? The first question you ask is what? Which school of thought you follow? Always, you don't answer your opinion. What school of thought you follow? What school of school you, thought you follow? So the woman's and I say, okay, which, where do you come from? 
which is India and Pakistan, that's the communist, right, or the Far East. I was like, so you're a Hanafi. Do you pray with socks or without socks? That's my next question. She said, without socks. So which school of thought she is? Hanafi, because he's the only one. The only one, he says, okay, Salah is okay without socks. The other three schools, no, nope, you need to cover. So I said, you're Hanafi. So what does she do with this bleeding? She pray or don't, ble or don't pray? Huh? Pray or don't pray? Yes or no or I don't know? Okay, I'm going to make it easy. How many of you say she will pray? Show me hands. She needs to pray. She just saw the bleeding. So this is my question. The question is, this woman doesn't remember a thing. For six or eight years, pregnant or delivering. Now she is at noon today, getting ready to go to masjid. Let's make it very interesting this scenario, right? Took her ghusul and dress and going to the Jumu'ah. And guess what? Boom. She goes or she doesn't? Doesn't. Dakika, just a second, don't jump on her. She doesn't. Why? That's the, everything you answer. You really need to know why. Remember, this is hukum of Allah. You're telling the woman don't pray or you're telling the woman pray. So yes or no? She said don't go. Who says go? The first question you should ask what? What school of thought you follow? If she tells you I'm a Hanafi, then go or don't go? Look at my face. What did I say here? Okay. Previous slide, please. Exactly. How do I know this is a cycle? I need three days of bleeding in the Hanafi school. Then it is cycle. That's what I'm telling you. That's why I wanted the previous one. Can we go back? Did she go back? So the minimum duration of menstrual cycle, minimum days of bleeding, then I regarded it as bleeding. So minimum, that's why we said day and a half, a day and a night, 24 hours, or no minimum, just one time you see. So let's make it easy for you. If I am a Hanafi and I have not had a cycle for years and I don't remember, then I will wait three days because if this bleeding happened only once, and nothing else, that's not your cycle. You know when this is very relevant? When you put IUD. When you put all your breastfeeding. Right? And you call me. It's like, Sister Haifa, what is this bleeding? Should I pray? Did you get the, why I'm saying this? So if she's a Hanafi, she needs to wait three days. This bleeding has to continue for three days. So these are three days you pray. Then, if it continues more than three days, that's it. If she is not a Hanafi, 24 hours, day and night. Yes, yeah, because you don't know. If she is a Maliki, absolutely not. Because he requires only one time. You see it, blood comes out, you're done. Did you get it? Confused, very confused? Very confused. Now you're going to learn not to answer. Alhamdulillah. Yes, sister. I can't hear you, Habib. Oh, tell me. I'm sorry, she has? Ah, that's a different story. Uh-huh. This is why I told you, she does not remember her cycle. I told you eight years, but if she knows her cycle, and this is the time, absolutely her cycle. Did you get the point? Remember the definition. On an appointed what? Time. Appointed time. Alhamdulillah, I, I can see it on your faces. Like how many times I've said to the woman, wrong answer. It's okay. Alhamdulillah. Right? Alhamdulillah. Don't rush. Tomorrow we're going to cover this. This is what we're going to cover. Tomorrow. All the rulings related to Salah. All the rulings related to Psalm. All uh, rulings related to Quran. Touching and reading. Getting to the masjid, staying in the masjid, passing through the masjid. We're going to cover Hajj and Umrah. We're going to cover marriage and relationship. We're going to cover postpartum bleeding. We're going to cover abnormal bleeding. So don't rush. I told you, 140 slides.
I, I think I am going to see only two people tomorrow. Right? No, inshallah more. Already, so remember this. First question you ask the woman, what school of thought she follows? Right? And I give you a, an easy clue. If she prays without socks, then she's a Hanafi. Right? However, if she knows it, she knows this is the time, that's my usual time, then that's it, خلاص, alhamdulillah. Okay? So three opinions, we said this, 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 no lower limit, that's in Maliki. Right, what is the longest duration? How, how long? For how long? How long? Bleeding for how long? Huh? So I have 11, I have 15, what else? I have 10, Any, anything else? Huh? I can't hear, I, I heard 8. Um, did I hear 8, somebody from this side? Okay, so I hear 8, or I hear 11, or I hear 10. What do else I hear? 15, or 14. Huh? Okay. So what is the longest? The answer is yes and no, and there's a lot of wrong answers to be gentle with you. So let's look into the slide. Next one, please. Already. There's two numbers only. Don't throw numbers. It's only two. Hanafi school, maximum 10. Hanafi school, maximum 10. So remember the Hanafi school, the ruling of 3 to 10. Minimum 3 days, she has to be bleeding before it's a cycle. Maximum 10. And all the other school is 15. That's what you all... Where does this come? If you put an IUD again, if you put the non-hormonal IUD and your period become longer, Okay, for how long? Your cycle changes. That's very common scenario. The cycle changes. What do I do? So again, I ask the question. Hanafi, you pray without the socks, 10 days. Day 11, you make your ghusl and you start praying. No, you are the other ones. Wait till 15 days. After 15 days, then you start praying fasting. This is also relevant to Ramadan and fasting. Absolutely. This is like a killer for the woman in Ramadan. It's like, Sister hey, for 15 days. I was like, I'm sorry. I wish I can tell you something else, but I can't. Unless you're a Hanafi, you have a five days less. Right? And next Ramadan, make sure you get yourself something to, to, to bleed less. But remember these numbers. So the longest, maybe basically, in a month, in every month, if you bleed all the month, you have to have at least 15 days of purity. Meaning... You can pray and you fast, even if you're bleeding. To get the point? So remember, because the communist opinion, the three school of thoughts is 15 days. And everything after 15 is abnormal bleeding. Yes? Question? Naam ya ayah. Ayah always lack of sabr. Asbir kama sabara ulul azmi min al rusul. I'm giving her all the ayat of sabr in the Quran. The, the order Allah gave to Rasulullah is going to come. When we get to the abnormal bleeding, because it's a very relevant question, by the way. It's very good question. But we're going to cover it when we come to the abnormal bleeding. When the woman continues to bleed, how does she know which is which? How For how long? Right? I'm talking now about norm. Norm cycle. Tayyip. Already, this, there is this hadith, I put it there in case some of you will, will learn this. It's in Tirmidhi and Al-Bukhari. This is a woman. Now look at this. This is a woman came to Rasulullah Right? And this is Hamna bin Jahsh, sister of Zainab. Who's Zainab bin Jahsh? Sayyidah Zainab, the wife of Rasulullah This is her sister. Came to Rasulullah saying the following. Wallahi, me these days. Me. And I'm an OBGYN. And I cannot imagine myself going to Rasulullah asking him this question. I will be in my clothes, as they say. I'll be sweating. I, but subhanAllah, they wanted to learn their deen. That's what I want to tell you all. Learning their deen did not, their, any, even Sayyidah Aisha said this about especially the woman of Al-Ansar. Bashfulness and being shy did not prevent them from learning. So look what she said. She came to him and she says, I am a woman. I bleed heavy for a long time. No cycle. Right? So he come to her and he says, SubhanAllah, It is abnormal. 
Of course, this is a terminology, but it's abnormal. If you don't know anything, then you do six to seven days, then you take a shower. I'll, I'll come to this later on. But this is another opinion, that you take the average. The average. What is the average of the woman? Six to seven days. What does medicine say? Five to seven days. SubhanAllah. That's what they taught us. Five to seven days. SubhanAllah. Okay? Clear? And I'll come to this when we come to the abnormal bleeding later on. Right. So minimum days of purity. Meaning, there has to be every month certain amount of time where it doesn't matter what I see. I am praying. I am fasting. The relationship with my husband. I can come to the masjid. I can read Quran. I can review my Quran. All this. 15 days in the majority as I said to you. 15 days in the majority. That's all the school of opinion. One opinion of Imam Ahmed that he says 13 days. But it is 15 days. So, let's say you're a Hanafi. You bled day one. First of the month. Up till day 11, you're still bleeding. So day 11, I pray or I don't pray? You pray. If I am not a Hanafi, if I am not a Hanafi, pray or not pray, perfect. Then day 15 of the month, I'm still bleeding. If I am not a Hanafi, pray or don't pray? Day 15, not yet. Day 16, I am continuously bleeding. Now it's day 30 of the month. Now May 31st, and I'm still bleeding. What do I do May 31st? Pray, because it's more than 15 days. Did you get it? I don't know. I don't think you got it. Let's do it again. Look at the month. Once you look at the calendar, this is what I tell patients. Show me your calendar. Let's do it on the calendar. So May 1st, you're, you started the bleeding. Right? And you cannot remember your cycle, that scenario. Or normally you're seven. Huh? May 8, I'm bleeding. May 9, I'm bleeding. May 10, I'm bleeding. This month, something happened. I'm Hanafi. May 11, I start doing what? Pray and fast and relationship and everything else. I am not a Hanafi. I don't pray. I don't fast, right? Till day 16. I'm still bleeding. What do I do on day 16? Pray and fast and everything. We'll come to this also in abnormal bleeding. Now it's May 31st. I'm still bleeding. Other than calling my OBGYN, this is abnormal. What are we going to do with the salah? May 31st. Go back and pray. Did you get it? So you have to have every month the four school of thought. Every month there has to be 15 days that you pray and you fast. And of course, all the others. Meaning, That's how they say it in Arabic. The minimum days of Islamic purity, meaning no bleeding, is 15 days. Every month there is 15 days. After fast, pray, and do all this. Yes. Yes. No. And every month. Perfect. Good question. March 31st, I start uh, fast praying, move, right? I'm still bleeding. June 14, I'm still praying. June 15, I'm bleeding. I'm not praying anymore. You count it every 15 days. Okay, when we get to, I can see you are completely confused. Alhamdulillah. So you don't answer the woman when she asks. When, she asks. when we get on Sunday, remind me if I forget. When you come to the abnormal bleeding, I will make some charts for you. Actually, we had this, when we did this course in Jannah Institute, we gave the women questions and answers. Give them real scenarios. Real scenarios. Put it on the calendar and tell me what are you going to tell the woman? Or what are you going to tell yourself? But just minute, I memorize this now, that the minimum time of purity is 15 days. And we will practice it on Sunday, inshallah. Tayyip? Actually, we finished. Alhamdulillah, because that's class two, that's tomorrow. I think so, right? Yes, exactly, this is tomorrow. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Akraham. Right. What I am teaching you today is the norm. If you know the norm, 
If it doesn't fit the norm, then it is abnormal. Right? So memorize these numbers. We will come to the abnormal bleeding because it is on Sunday. We'll cover abnormal bleeding. Sometimes it comes early. Sometimes, let's give the scenario. We have time. Today is what? Let's say June 1st. Right? You had your cycle. You're a Hanafi. Pay attention to this. This will help you. You're a Hanafi. You normally have regular cycle. Your cycle usually come every 22 days. That's your period. Right? So May 1st, you got your cycle and it was completely normal. And by seven days, you were free of bleeding. Alhamdulillah. Then on May 18, write the number because you need to write the number. You got bleeding. Write that down. What is this bleeding? Bleeding. It's not spotting. It's bleeding. I have to put a pad. I go to the bathroom, Sister Haifa, and there is blood coming. I started my cycle June 1st. I finished June 7th. 7. June 18th. I have bleeding. What is this bleeding? Pray or don't pray? That's the question. How many of you say pray? Why? Because it is not 15. Why the rest didn't answer? Why the rest of you didn't answer? <laughs> She's still doing the math. That's okay. <laughs> so this is how you would calculate. Literally. Write it down. We have, even in medicine, menstrual calendar, we call it. I tell the woman, take it for three months and come back to me and I will look. But in Ramadan, I, this is exactly what I do. I write it down and I count it. I tell the woman, tell me, if she, fin if she, started, if she finished her cycle day seven and she prayed, walillah alhamd, then she got her period bleeding, let's say not period, bleeding, right? June 30th. What does she do with this bleeding? It's earlier than my cycle, Sister Haifa. I was supposed to get my cycle July 5th, but I got it June 5th, 30th. She finished June 7th. Write that down. She finished June 7th. And she starts praying everything. She's supposed to get her cycle, right? July 5th. But she got her bleeding June 28. What is this June 28 bleeding? I can't hear you. And, and it is bleeding. It's bleeding with a flow, all this. Cycle or not cycle? Right. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Because it is more than 15 days. Did you get it? Because that's very common scenario. In the summer, you travel, you go through exhaustion, you get sick, you get fever. The pattern change. Temporary, not all the time. Temporary change. Yes, sister. Very good. I was waiting for this question. So when you tell me, from when do I start counting? You, you, you prayed, let's say you... Uh, took a ghusl and you prayed maghrib. From there it starts. You went to a maghrib of whatever that time. So when did you start praying? Or when did you start not praying? So you put it on a calendar. These days, walillah alhamdulillah, is all this eye period, all these things. But if you are still uh, a visual person, you want to write it down, just write. Today, a menstrual cycle, maghrib time. Because it's a 24 hours, day and night. Till Maghrib. Clear? I think, I think you got it now with the examples. Alhamdulillah. One scenario, because we have some time. Walillah, alhamdulillah. Allah is so generous. So the same scenario. The woman got her cycle June 1st. Finished June 7th. Same scenario. June 28th. She is seeing, she just told you, I'm bleeding. What do you tell her? I, just talk to me. It's okay. If wrong, it's okay. If it, good. If it's right, alhamdulillah. What do you tell her? She texted you and says, you went to this class. And I heard you learned a lot. Don't disappoint me. Right? And then she sends you the scenario. This is a very common question, by the way. 
So June 1st, I got my cycle, my usual time. Finished June 7th, took my ghusl, maghrib time, start praying. June 28th, I start bleeding. That's her message. What do you answer? I tricked you and very easily you are tricked. No, it's not. If it's the same scenario, why I'm saying it? First question you have to ask. Tell me more about the bleeding. Is it bleeding? Because we women refer to bleeding anything we see. So if she just saw a spot on 28, it, what is this spot? Is it cycle? Not yet. There's no flow. So make sure you ask this question. Is it bleeding? And she says, yes, yes. You know what I ask? So are you putting pads? She said, yes. I said, how much blood in that pad? What time you put the pad? And when did you take it out? Please forgive me. When you go to the bathroom, do you wipe and see the blood? Or you th it comes out? You see the questions I'm asking? Because I'm telling her, pray or don't pray, may Allah forgive me. And if she prayed, and this is her cycle, ya wayli, because she disobeyed Allah. And if she didn't pray, and this is not her cycle, again, ya wayli, because she disobeyed Allah. Do you see the point? So ask as many questions as you can before you give your fatwa. Even if she tells you it's bleeding, because I see it in my office. So if I'm bleeding, she comes to the office. Where is the bleeding? Drops. Because the way we perceive things is different. So always ask, timing, when was your last cycle? How often you get your cycle? Are you on any medications? Have this happened before? What's the type of bleeding? What color? Pads? Get as many questions as you get and write it down. And then calculate, and then inshallah, you get, you, yani, even if you gave the wrong answer, but you did your, as they say to in fiqh, you literally tried your best to get all the information. Like any other question? Where is, uh, uh, yes. It's okay. On the night, good question. Very good question. I'll come to it, but I just want you, so let's say June, June 1st to June 7th. June 9th, she gets bleeding. Very good question. What is the first question you have to ask before you give your hukum? Okay, so she told, good, what kind of blood or spot? She said, no, it's a bleeding. So say, it's bleeding. What is the second question you ask? I'm sorry, one of you, please. I'm sorry? Excellent. What is your pattern? What is your pattern usually? Is this is normal for you? How many of us have bleeding for three, four days, and then two days, nothing, and then comes back again? That's my usual. Versus if she tells you never. I've never had this before. This is my first time. What are you going to tell her? Exactly. You're going to tell her you have to pray or not? Right. If this is the first time, Usually you will tell her no, because most scholars will tell you if it changes, it needs to change for three months. Because period changes. But if she tells you that's my usual, oh, sometimes I get this, sometimes. Every couple of months I get this, sister. But what's the answer? That's your cycle. So, Yani, what I'm trying to tell you, and I think Allah made it easy, Ya Rabbi, that you now learn to ask more, investigate. Get to the details. And even if you say, let me double check before you give an answer. Then you say, don't pray, and she has to, or the other way around. Questions? Yes. Perfect. So, very common scenario on people who have PCOS. People who have polycystic disease of the ovary. She missed two or three months. And then she starts bleeding. What do I do? Come on and answer me. It's two or three months. 
two or three months only, two months. And she starts bleeding. Smells like cycle, it's heavy. So what is that first day? Don't wait yet, she's bleeding now today. She told you she missed it two or three days, two to three months, meaning she has a regular cycle. But this time she missed it for two months and now she's bleeding. Allah, how you confused you are. I love it. So she is, I'm not saying you, but in the question you, you said. So I normally get, okay, I normally get my cycle first five days of the month, one of them, three, four. So I got January, I got February, I got March, usual. Guess what? I missed April and May. And now June 5th, I have it. First question, does it look like your cycle? Yes, it is. Number two, medically, are you pregnant? That's when the menstrual lady can, can, the pregnant lady can menstruate, right? But the most important thing is like, if it looks like your cycle, it is your cycle. Or how long? Now she's bleeding. So June 5th, she's bleeding. You said it is your cycle. For how long? God, I confused you again. So June 15, she calls you. Right? So June 7, she saw, she, June 5th, she had her bleeding. Looks like cycle. You told her it is your cycle. June 15, she called you. Said, Sister Haifa, I'm still bleeding. What do I do? What do you ask? What do you ask? What do you ask? Huh? What? What school of thought? Right? She's a Hanafi. What do you say? One more day and you're done. Ten days only. She's not. Five more days. Remember this. This is, Wallah the scenarios may be different, but the answers, the principles are the same. It's what I wanted you to learn. The principles are the same. Make sure the bleeding fit the criteria of menstruation, meaning flow, blood, red, not one spot, and she panic, number one. Is, does she have regular cycle? Normally, this woman, and she remembers, that's the easiest one, follow your pattern. She doesn't, then you're gonna come. What school of thought you are? Are you taking any medications? Are you pregnant? So, Yani, most of the time, if you follow this, you will be able. However, I will highly recommend, unless it's needed, don't answer. Refer her to your, Alhamdulillah, this is a community full of scholars. Refer her to, don't be shy. Tell her, send me the question, I'll send it to him. But don't answer if you're not sure. Please don't, because you will be asked on Day of Judgment. If you gave the wrong answer, and this wrong answer is not uh, uh, you lose weight to eight calories. This is pray or don't pray, or fast or don't fast, and marital relationship. She said no, she's in big trouble. She said yes, she's in a bigger trouble. Did you get my point? Yeah, really. I mean, it's a serious, the rulings related to menstruation is serious. That's why I told you we need to learn it. Clear? I think we need to, don't they come and pray here or no? Today is all for us. I don't know, you are the organizer. We, we, we like invaded the men, Musalla. Maghrib in 20 minutes. We'll take five more minutes so we can all get ready for Maghrib. Any questions? Yes. No, you please do because she didn't say a thing. I, I see she's writing, Alhamdulillah. Absolutely. You go with the majority of opinion, which is the strongest. So if she doesn't know, remember I asked you, do you pray with your socks or without socks? That's the easiest question. Because if she prays without the socks, she's a Hanafi. Yeah, so what I normally say is, what is your imam, because you follow your imam, what does your imam do in your community? I always tell the people, don't uh, make it harder on you. 
Your Imam is Maliki, I'm assuming, because he's from Algeria or Shafi, I don't know, right? Right? So, khalas, when you ask him, usually he would answer you according to his, his teaching. You follow it up. But if she doesn't know, she lives in Alaska and there's nobody, no whatever, give her the, the, the more, the majority. That's why I showed you the majority. Like the three schools of thought said 15 days. It, only Hanafi say 10 days. Right? The majority of school says day and, day and night. Only Hanafi say three days. So if she doesn't know, you give her the stronger. Yes. Now, yes. Sister, what's your name? I loved your question, answers. I can't hear you. Qadir, mashallah. Min al-Qadir, yani? Yani capable? Mashallah, tabarakum. Oh, every one of you need to know the meaning of her name. Because the Rasul said that the meaning of is choose the names for your children because they will have part of it. So Qadira may Allah make you Qadira ala ta'atih to obey him, to do what pleases him, to do everything that's good for you, Ya Rabbi Amin. Yeah, it's a very good question. We're going to come to it when we talk about postnatal bleeding, but I will give you to it today. So this is another common scenario. You have two or three days you're bleeding, then in a day or two, nothing, especially postpartum, very common. If she thinks she's done, she goes and takes ghusl, guess what? So there is a three opinions of this. One opinion says all of it is menstruation. Some opinion, second opinion says that time is not menstruation. Another opinion says, which is very interesting, it says she counts the days of the bleeding as menstruation and she count and she add them till she gets to the maximum of the 10 days or the 15. I am from the opinion because medically it is all from menstruation because it's that time. The uterus is not yet clean. Yani, if you do ultrasound to that lady who is two days she bled and there is nothing. If you do an ultrasound, the lining is not yet thin. So there's still some blood in there. Yes. I'm not seeing this side. The fan is blocking you, ladies. Wa alaikum salam. Can't hear you, Habib. So, okay. So the question is, do you have to wait for three months to see if this is a pattern? It depends on the scenario. There is scenarios where this is the first time you're having your cycle. So your daughter is not nine or ten, right? She has no period yet. There's no cycle, right? And it's in fiqh they call al-mu'tada, al-mutahayyira, al-mumayyiza. So if you've never had a bleeding before, you have no idea what is your pattern, right? So you will follow Hanafi three days. The first three days of bleeding is not bleeding. Then you go for 10 days. If you follow the other school of thought, the first day, you don't, it's not your period yet. If second day you're still bleeding, that's your cycle for 15 days. If it changes, if it changes, most scholars will say, wait for three months before you change. I follow this not because of that, because medicine say that also. Medicine say three months usually your pattern will be fixed, meaning one month I got a longer cycle. That doesn't mean your cycle will be long. That could be changes happen this month. But if it persists for three months, then your cycle changes, changed. And it's a very common scenario, by the way. You get shorter, you get longer. The older, the younger we get, the, the cycle changes after 30s, those of you. After 30, after 35, it changes. It's, it becomes shorter, meaning shorter uh, span. It comes, instead of 30 days, it becomes 25. And the woman panic. I was like, don't panic. It changes. It's very common at that time. It's a lot of changes. Do you know now why it is so difficult and Imam Ahmed stayed nine years in the... Now you're all nodding your head? Honestly, because no woman like the other. SubhanAllah. It's just, I want you to learn the principle and then inshallah, it will be. And if you came out of this class, says, I will never talk about menstruation. 
I'll refer her to Sheikh Yasin and I am done. Then you learned. You absolutely, wallahi, you absolutely learned. Because you learned that this is way above my scope of knowledge. The book that, one, the main book that I prepared this, it's 1700 pages. He looked at every hadith. SubhanAllah, it's a PhD thesis was. He looked at every hadith, everything, and he analyzed it. And that's weak, and that's why. And it's, he went into details. It's beyond the man, actually. It's tortured me there's no woman did that. But may Allah reward him. Yes. Sure. Oh, this is your, oh, she's your mom? Don't ask in front of your mom. She will get very scared. You should have sent it to me in writing. <laughs> That's okay. Medically, yes, mom will say no. That's my struggle in my office. Yes, usually we like it to be regulated. We like it to be regulated because it's, I mean, I don't want to take, say medical things in front of everybody, but in general, having regular cycle is healthier than not having it for your body in general. And by the way, the body needs only four cycles a year. Yes, subhanAllah. Yes. Walaikum <laughs> salam. I told you we need to, we are kicked out. Maghrib will be at 8.30. Can you finish within five minutes? I think we need to finish. You are so sweet. Jazakallah khair. Oh, who is this boy? MashaAllah, what is that? Wayyakum, I love that. You are so sweet. Jazakallah khair, I love that. I think we need to leave. Clear? See you tomorrow at 9.30 or nobody's going to show up to it? It's only you and me tomorrow. جزاكم الله خيرا سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه تسليما كثيرا